far side of the lake, try to get out of the wind and get set up over there. Set this pole up. We'll be drop shotting. Seven foot medium rod. Um, ten pound braid. Ten pound floral leader. Tie the leader on. Uh, trying to think of the name of the knot. Is it the crazy Alberto knot? It's pretty strong. Doesn't break often. But it is a pain in the butt to tie in the wind. Yeah. Make a loop. Run the line through, I hold it with my finger. Start wrapping it forward. Uh, I usually go six, seven times. Again, hard to do in the wind. Wrap it back the other way six, seven times back towards your loop. And back through the same way it came in. Should look like, not like that. Get it a little wet. Snug it together. Fantastic leader, leader knot, braid to floral. And I don't typically run a super long leader. I know some people run like a 10 foot. They think that the fish see the braid, spooks the fish, but you know, you're in seven, eight feet. It's pretty good. Still get the good sensitivity of your braid. But you do have the, all the benefits of the floral carbon as well. Run a Gamagatsu finesse wide gap. Pretty good hook. Usually tie a st standard polymer knot. Get it. Here get myself. I'm not gonna be running it super deep, so don't need a a big lead for your for your weight. Take your your tag in and back through the top through your eye. And that always keeps your hook upright. If you have it the other way, your hook will face down. Really hard to hook fish with your hook facing upside down. It's pretty windy out here today, so we're gonna use probably a three eighths cylinder weight. I like the cylinder weights, they don't hang up as much as the round balls. Probably gonna run about a foot, about a foot off the bottom today. Pull that up. Standard drop shot. And today, it's a shimmy steak day. Stick bait, Strike King. Uh, got a few different colors. We got watermelon with red flake, uh, cinnamon blue, pretty natural color for a worm. And then when I like to fish a little bit deeper, you know, around 20 feet, I like throwing the chartreuse with the white. Don't know why, but maybe it shows up better underwater at that depth than the green and the green water. But they do work. And I think we're, we're just gonna wacky rig them today. It's probably my favorite way. Just kind of find, you know, roughly the middle. You know, sometimes I've seen people run them out, you know, run them on one side or the other, kind of offset the bait, but I like to do it right in the middle. Kind of keep it nice and even.
there is to it. Drop shot, strike king, shimmy stick. Some people like the Sankos, some people like the Yum Dingers. I like the shimmy stick. Been a million videos out there between the shimmy stick and the Sanko as far as which one has the best action, which one's got the best wobble to it. Um, I don't know, I've seen the videos, it looks pretty negligible. I think you know, you just fish whatever you're confident with. Um, probably have better success. Uh, we're gonna flip, so we got, we got three docks here. Um, you know, all docks, they're all, these three docks are basically the same. They're 30, 40 feet apart. They got pilings, there's a couple boats tied up. One's got a boathouse. Uh, this time of year, it's hot out. These fish are undercover or they're out deep. Um, these docks particular, at the end of the dock, it's probably 12 to 15 feet deep on the end of the dock probably where I'm guessing most of these fish are gonna be, they're gonna be right out on the end or between the middle and the end in the deeper water. Probably not gonna be a lot of stuff up super shallow. Water's just a little too warm. Fishing for smallmouth, they don't really particularly care for warm water. So, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can, uh, see if we can pull a couple out here. You know, I can throw it out there, just let it kind of hold the tension up. It's a little hard, it's windy today. Um, you know, just kind of give it a little, just hopping it along the bottom. Nothing super fancy. Um, I do like to keep constant tension on the weight. That way if I do get a bite, you know, you can, you'll be able to feel it. Out here, there's just a nice little rocky flat that comes out. There's one right there. Oh. Yep, there's a bite. Just a little guy, I think. Yep, just a little one. But I mean, as soon as that, as soon as that worm hit the bottom, you know, it just he was there. Definitely nothing to write home about. But, you know, drop shot perfectly hooked in the top of the mouth. Hook comes right out. Just a little guy. Maybe we'll find something a little bit better. Did twist my worm all up though, that's for sure. Roll back out, see if we can find Find something a little bit bigger than that. Not much. Another little guy. And even for a little fish, these smallmouth, so fun to catch. got off. Darn it. I didn't even know I had one. <laughs> Bait was falling. He picked it up and came right at the boat. 
I was sitting there watching it, and I was like, how come my bait never hit bottom? Didn't feel nothing. Kept reeling, kept reeling, kept reeling, all slack line until I realized that he was, he was kind of running to the side at the boat. Bummer. find a good one here. There's one. That one feels a little better. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's what we've been looking for. As long as I can keep them on the hook this time. That's a big one. There we go. Perfect top hook. Right in the top. Lost my worm. But I would say lost my weight too. But I would say that was a pretty effective what four fish in a very short amount of time drop shot shimmy stick